when I'm not podcasting, as you know, I normally do podcasting and I do shows like the Broadcasters Podcast, of which the website you see here, broadcasterspodcast.com. On that show, I talk about everything from music, movies, to TV, and radio. But there's a time where I do want to talk about radio more than anything else, and I don't put a complete focus on that program there because it's, I mean, I could talk about it for hours. And I wanted to take some time out of everything else to talk about the radio industry itself. So for those of you, listen, I know there's some, some programs that I do, some videos that I do that are not necessarily your taste when it's not anything about dating or ride sharing or other cultural issues. But this is something I think is very important to me. And I'm a radio file of heart. And people know that I do do stories about radio here on the When I'm Not Podcasting audio and video series. So let me tell you what I'm thinking about this. Now, I've been talking about lately how the radio industry is being affected by the coronavirus, the pandemic. But here's the thing. <clears throat> it's not doing anything. There's no effect it's supposed to be at all. So in the last month, there's a lot of stories that have been talked about it. <clears throat> and they probably don't say too much about it in the first place. But I'm going to go ahead and take a few minutes to go ahead and talk about the full brunt of the radio industry and why it's not doing what it needs to do. And honestly, this is a time for radio to have a renaissance. It's time for a reckoning, if you will. The business is already going to be falling apart right now. Like back at the end of last year, iHeartRadio, Intercom, some of these companies that are not in really good physical shape when it comes to the kind of money that they're supposed to be making, the kind of revenue they're going to be getting in compared to the debt that they're carrying, the weight of the debt. The thing is, the way they've been doing business, no matter how corporately structured and how much they think they can micromanage everything else, it's not working. And this, more than anything else, the pandemic, it's a time for change. And I want to bring up some change. I'm the kind of person with a philosophy about being more constructive and less critical. So I want to be constructive here. And I've done radio for 25 years plus. I think I know a little something. And I've never been anybody in particular management except for managing the stuff I do in podcasting now. But I did radio before. And if I didn't have podcasting to come into play, you know, I would have been in radio. And I've done some radio since then, and I've done some managing stations, you know, in the last couple of years, if you know my background. And all I'm saying is it's so much that's missing here. And I know I could talk to people that have been in the radio industry for a long time that will say that they're not happy with the way things are. And you know what? Why is it that people want to go to streaming music and go anywhere else but? Well, there's a lot of reasons. And we know the reasons why. But... We could talk about what the reasons why, but why don't we talk about certain things that actually need to be done now that should be thought about. And then listen, if there are any people in management that listen to, that manage a radio station or are part of a radio company that even catches this for whatever reason, listen, my comments, my constructive criticism here, it's all meant to be well-intended because look, even if I'm not in the industry, I have a lot of good people that are in the industry and I want them to do well. And I want all of you to prosper after all this is all done. I don't know if that's going to happen now, but I want to talk about it. Now, first of all, I could use your help in getting this program promoted and getting this show out there and getting more people to go and listen to this content and helping me get supported to sponsor this content. So I ask you for a couple different things. Go to my Amazon link at kingofamazon.com. That's kingofamazon.com. So you can help out this show and put in just buying what you buy from Amazon, which will help out in a great little commission for the show. Plus, you can also always send the cash app to at king of all podcasts or go to my PayPal link, paypal.me slash king of podcasts. And also, if you love what I'm doing here on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, tell others to subscribe to the channel, and hit the notifi notification button so that you don't miss an episode. So let's go, what, let's go now into what's been talked about over the last month when it comes to radio. First off, e-consultancy. It's a marketing firm. Well, they talk about certain things where they talk about how the industry and the music has been, uh, I have, has been affected. Radio also counts into this study. So with many sectors, music and live entertainment have been severely impacted by the pandemic. So we know about that part. Music, streaming, 
people are doing less of it. Now, this is one thing that's very important. We talked about this on the Broadcasters Podcast. I'll bring it up here. Music Business Worldwide found that global streams from Spotify's top 200 chart dropped 11% to 226 million plays in the week commencing March 13th. So that was the week of the major national emergency here in the States. So again, March 13th is when a number of countries around the world follow the rest of the EU's lead and begin shuttering shops, bars, closing colleges, schools, nurseries, forcing people to practice social distancing and staying indoors. So at that moment, March 13th is the target and things started changing immediately. So as we look at this graphic right here, here are the streams in just global and Italy alone. So there's global up here on the top, Italy's here on the bottom. Italy just kind of just stays steady. There's not much of a significant difference, but well, actually that's what it was prior to. And the same thing there is what Spotify was then. Now, audio and video demand streams in Italy. Well, audio is here in the green, and you can see it actually stays kind of steady. It does have a little bit of a drop-off, then comes back up. But then news became much more prominent getting up to here. Now, Spotify then started doing these things to keep themselves cognizant. They need to put out news and information. So thus, they created a music relief project. They started doing things to keep people listening in. Now, there's another thing that was very important. Radio around the world was going up. So here's what's happening here. The world tunes in the radio, according to the BBC. And I'll bring up another story that says the same thing. It saw its own radio properties boast a streaming increase of 18%. Similar to reports from Global, which owns Capital FM and LBC 97.3, they saw a 15% increase in online radio streams between March 9th and March 17th. So up. And then with so much cooking going on, people just desperate for news and coverage of the situation, they were going to radio stations for a lift. And the, the issue situation is supposedly compelling more in the U.S. But here's what we have. They're not talking about all stations. There's a couple of select stations that are being promoted because the U.S. radio stations are going to nitpick stats to make themselves look like, oh, everybody's coming to us during a time of crisis. So here's what they do. Uh, John Pacino, not to be confused with, you know, uh, Al Pacino here, Intercom Communications Corp. Senior Vice President. He says that to the LA Times, listing was up as much as 44% on one of his stations, which was a talk station, KNX. And iHeartRadio, they decided to do something different. They don't necessarily talk about the FM AM radio stations. They're talking about iHeartRadio itself as the app. So an increase in key engagement metrics According to Chief Programming Officer Tom Pullman, significant increase in digital me measurements, including increased usage across smart speakers, smart TV, and its website. That's nothing. We're talking about on your phone or in your car or on a device you can listen back to. So you might see a couple of significant things there. But again, it might just be news you're looking for. But what the music stations? What about the other stations that could be competing up against the Spotify's and the Pandora's and the Apple's of the world? What are they doing? I don't know. So they talked about that. And now let's move along into what BBC said about themselves. So radio listening was booming and music streaming was stalling. From BBC again, they said that data from two analytics companies suggested music or streaming apps such as Spotify dipped by 8%. And... BBC Radio Education Director James Purnell said, people, quote, are turning to us during significant events for our news and analysis, but also for music, entertainment, and companionship. Now, these are a couple of things that are here that we don't get in U.S. radio. American Terrestrial Radio doesn't have that. NPR doesn't have that. Be honest. It's, honestly, it's packaged. It's canned. It's, I mean, it's all taped. There's nothing live about it. There's nothing interactive about it. Now, there's a lot of people that are doing Facebook Live and Instagram and other ways they can go on and get engaged on a live stream. And you're telling me you can't do the same thing even when you, if your FM and AM are not necessarily prominent. But if you're able to go and do something where you get programming going on and if people want to go ahead and follow along all day, then you can listen on the radio in the car, actually turn on the AM FM stereo. Wow, what a concept. But people are not doing that. And here's the thing, BBC says their radio is going up in Italy and other places. 
their radio is going up and they're listening to music and not just news. So what is the terrestrial radio stations here not doing? Well, let's go along to it. Rolling Stone talked about it. They said in a crisis, radio should be bigger than ever. So why isn't it? And employees said that a muddied strategy is standing in the way. So in the story, I talked about uh, the radio station K-Rock out of Los Angeles. Now, there was a show called Kevin and Bean, which was a perennial show there for a long time. One of the guys left. The other guy got fired, basically. Uh, and Kevin Ryder, who was part of the team, Kevin and Bean, was there for 30 years. And once his cohort left, he continued to show without. And they brought in new people, and they just went along like normal. But then, there they go. The familiar voices at a time like this in Los Angeles, which did get hit with the pandemic and people were nervous to have those calming voices that relate to them, not being there on the air for them. And that's it. And that's for a rock station. And honestly, the rock station is going to get changed. K-Rock was going to be changed up to something else because it's not the same as it was. And the thing is, is that it's a station that's playing kind of music of the past because it's not necessarily playing everything new. And if they are, they're going up against the grain because at the time they had a program director there that worked with Kevin and Bean that was there and they really did benefit what they were doing for them, for the audience, because it was a long-term audience that had been around for 30 years. And they had been around where rock had changed so many different ways, right? They survived grunge. They survived into the 2000s. And when radio, when rock radio was no longer the prominent thing on the dial, and rock wasn't even prominent on mainstream radio anymore, K-Rock states was guns and kept doing what they were going to do. But what happened now? Now, there are no stations, and this is a station that might be to an older demographic because there might not be that much young rock, young rock listeners or young alternative listeners because alternative Compared to K-Rock, it's kind of oil and water a little bit. They find some things that might mix together, but not necessarily compared to what the station was made out of and what was for many years. But here's where we are now. So again, AM, FM radio, there are certain things that are supposed to be helpful, but it's gotten so much harder because the stations have gone through layoffs after layoffs after layoffs and the kind of manpower and the kind of resources that you need in order to keep people in touch and in line of what's going on is gone. And then companies like iHeartRadio, they're going to uh, artificial intelligence to kind of replace the human component, the human element. That human element is gone. And the thing is, you need the human element, not just to, just to be somebody there to be a voice, but somebody that knows what they're doing to keep you entertained, keep you calm, keep you engaged. Well, how many people are out there that do that, that are not just morning shows? And at this point, a lot of these morning shows are irrelevant because people were not on the road for the last six weeks or more because they had no reason to go out. So they're not going to put on the radio out to go grab some coffee, grab some breakfast, do whatever errands they have to do, drop the kids off at school. They had none of that to do. So they're all staying home. So morning radio is irrelevant. And radio did not decide to make any changes, decide not to do anything to try to keep, give a reason for people to go and listen. Because music streaming doesn't have a human component. There's nobody there telling you about the songs, telling you about things that are going on that are there. I mean, radio, before we had digital streaming, back in the 90s, before we had internet, that's what it was for. It was another way of engaging the people. It was a way of community. We don't have community right now. Community is social media. Well, there's certain things from social media that need to be taken now in order to make things better for radio, and that's what they're not doing. They think, oh, we'll just add some things on social media to accompany what we're doing. No, you need to create your own community, not just take the community that's there to promote your product, because that's just that's a cop-out. You have a marketing material and an AM, FM signal. You're drawing no one to it. And maybe you're drawing people to your digital stream. But again, who's going to sit through all those damn commercials? Nobody. People go to streaming media and go to satellite for lack of commercials. you got to have some, of course. But the way things are done now, it's totally different. 
People don't want commercials. And more importantly, when they're listening into something, you know, you don't have the voices and the talent that used to, that basically could account to letting people stick around and listen 10, 12 minutes for commercials for you just to get that host to come back. Howard Stern had that kind of clout. He still does it now, about six, seven minutes of commercials so he can go away and do what he needs to do and have time to get the sponsors. But the truth is there's that. And what are you going to do there, right? So the familiarity gap. In the story from Rolling Stone, live events, many industries, all the things they would do to promote, you know, with certain sponsors or events, those are all out. Well, so what are you going to do? You're just going to make it so people don't talk about anything? Like you have nothing for your radio people to talk about except your websites and your social media. And the worst thing you could be doing is taking celebrity gossip and gossip of, in general, which means nothing. It is the cheapest, easiest way to do things. It's a TMZ gimmick. Why does that even matter? Why does it every radio show, if you listen to it, they're all talking about the same thing. Hob, 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 hob. They're not seeing anything special. That's the problem. So, again, you know, they talk about K Rock being looked at as a relative anomaly in the alternative radio format. So, now you're basically flipping just to match every other alternative station. That's what's going on because alternative, from what it was called as a rock format, is now more of a pop hip-hop leaning format that's what it's become and the biggest thing is is that there wasn't any reason for those songs that are called alternative to not be played on mainstream radio see the problem is that pop radio became very antiseptic they disinfected that yeah don't say disinfected and think what you're gonna think stop it okay let's disinfect it stop don't think lysol clorox no 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 we're not doing that to radio listen so alternative is just, it really, it's not rock. There's not much guitar-based music to it anymore. Not much guitar and drum bass or acoustics. Not much of that at all. But those songs, there isn't any reason why those songs should not be on the radio in mainstream. Pop radio should not be pop radio. We shouldn't even have that. We should be back to top 40. We should be back to mainstream radio. That's what radio should be once again. It's what's in the mainstream. And what's in the mainstream is what's on social media. Now, if I had a station now that I could target towards a younger audience, I don't see how you can't get these people to go to radio again. They all have a way to listen on the digital devices. They all can find, you know, whatever they want. They can go to TuneIn. They can go to iHeartRadio. They can go to radio.com. You can get those app platforms back up and running again. Maybe they'll even go in their car and they'll say, you know what? I don't want to turn on the Bluetooth right now. I'll turn on the radio. I'm not going to use the CD, but CD player. What is that for? No, they can actually listen to the radio. Give it tuned in, right? And you play the songs they're actually listening to. Not the songs that you want them to listen to that are eight to 12 weeks old or more. It's not, not that hard. All you have to do now is follow what people are listening to on the streams, listen, the Billboard Hot 100, that's a mainstream chart. In the BBC world, in the world of Britain and anywhere else, they have global charts. The official chart represents Britain, and, or the United Kingdom. And you know what they play? They play the songs that are on that chart. They're not, playing to what, they're not afraid of what they're playing on there. They can go from anywhere, from a grime rap artist to an alternative rock artist to alternative hip-hop leading artist to a dance artist to a pop artist. They're wide ranging. And as we just listened, as I just read, you know, they're getting an increase in audience. So people are going to them because you know what? They have people that are on the air. It's a nationalized format, which you could do here. And people are listening to it and they're engaged. I listen to the official chart, their countdown show that comes on every Friday. You know what they do? People are in there, they're engaged, they're texting, they're sending messages, emails, they're on Facebook, they're on Twitter, they're on Instagram, they're wherever. And they're all responding back on a Friday afternoon. 
and people make it a point to go and listen in and the artists to see if their songs are going to be number one on the chart. They actually call in. They can actually get regular guests to come on on a regular basis. What does Ryan Seacrest do? It's all agenda driven. It's not based on what they're on the chart for. It's what they can do for them. It's like some American Idol project or something that's going to be to the benefit of Heart Radio or to the benefit of somebody else. You know, it's that. Plus, there's no human emotion to a show like Ryan Seacrest does on the radio, the American Top 40. Because you hear them talk about the songs and they say, oh, here's what I did and constructed. It took me some while. And, you know, the songs are supposed to have this and this and this. But it's like we don't get to know who they are. There's no real human component, real human element to know who these people really are, which is really what's amazing that music is being more engaging by seeing people doing the at-home concerts. BBC Radio, they have a live lounge. They have like an unplugged series called Live Lounge. Very popular. And you know what they do? They actually have a song right now, Times Like This. It's an all-star record like USA for Africa or Band-Aid, right? Maybe if you know what those are, Google it. Big celebrity all-star music uh, single. And Times Like This became the number one song. At BBC Radio produced, number one song, first time ever. It's a radio song. You would have known about the song initially by listening to the FM radio. And then you'd find it on social media after that. But it first started from the radio and triggered all the way down. It became viral. That's how songs used to get viral back in the day. Radio was where songs got viral. People that were on the air would make a song viral. That's how it first started. And that can happen again. TikTok. You could be using TikTok. You could be using YouTube streams. You could be following everything. And Billboard does it for, all, does it for you all together. Meanwhile, no, we don't want to do that because we don't control what's going on. Yeah, because they want power and control. They want to manage poorly the way that people listen to radio. Well, it sucks. The truth is, it's time for radio to go back and listen to what the people are listening to and what they're actually engaged to. Therefore, go back to Billboard as the standard and make radio stations mainstream, not pop. They should be mainstream stations. And the mainstream should actually be at the time. It's, there's no reason to be 8 to 12 weeks behind. The rest of the world. There's no excuse for that anymore. We're so real time now. We're so trend. We're on such a trending society. You just get into a, to a trend and then you think, oh, eight weeks later, people are going to still be into it. No, you might be actually catching it at the peak of its point, but then it's going to be on the way down. And what does radio do? They run it to the ground. That's what they want to do because, you know, they're going to just take a tried and tested hit because they don't trust themselves to make anything viral. They don't think they can do that. Or the powers that be will not allow them to. Because they know what's going on. Streaming is very important. I mean, now you have artists that will put out new songs all the time. You know, last year, Ariana Grande, she put out two albums simultaneous. And then there's others that are just honestly like, you know, we can put out new songs whenever we want. Billy Eilish put out multiple songs, multiple singles, and put out an album, this and that. And they all do this. And you don't know when the album is going to come out. The point is, it's unpredictable, and you have no control of what music becomes hot and becomes popular. But meanwhile, the songs that are on the Billboard Hot 100 that actually gauge the real, what the real audience is listening to, if you were playing those songs that were on that chart, you'd actually be doing better. And if you had actually people on that were actually able to engage and be able to connect to the audience in real time. So maybe you just do it by text. Maybe you don't take phone calls. Maybe you take messages online. Whatever you got to do, it's got to be much easier doing it that way. And you can actually engage to your audience. And you can also cherry pick what you want to listen to. And rock radio, you know, there was a time back in the day where a station would be called progressive. And progressive meant, you know, there would be people that would be on the air that would play new music or play other songs that were iconic or something that would just be like they would kind of set the tone, set the pace, set the emotion so that you were engaged into what they were doing. And they would talk to you as you were with them playing the songs. They were your DJ and they actually engaged with you and they actually would keep you calm. If there was a blackout, if there was a hurricane or an earthquake or whatever, they were there for you at your time of need. We don't have that now. So these are the problems that we have. 
Now, back into the original story here, um, while music fans faced with a sprawling field of streaming options may not need music radio, many in the radio community would argue they still need their DJs. Quote, you can still hear your songs everywhere, but these personalities that you listen to and grow up with can be the calming, soothing voice to help you feel better, escape, or give you information and news. This is the vice president for programming for a smaller radio company that owns 14 radio stations on the East Coast. I 100% believe that. I grew up in the 80s when there was news. I wanted Tom Brokaw to tell me the news because I grew up with Tom Brokaw. These people become your friends. We do perceptual studies and research studies and people say, oh, they're like family. They're like my coworkers. Making changes now is bad for your brand because your listeners are used to these DJs and they're looking for the DJs they love. Well, then you cannot go with that because they're going to keep getting rid of them. And maybe you don't take hold of the DJs that are not in touch with today, are not in touch with digital disruption. You need to bring up people now. The new DJs that come up to the up front, they need to be embraced in digital, completely engulfed in digital. That's where we need to be now. But again, the flexibility is bad because there's no engagement. AM FM listenership down 5% from 2017 to 2019. Streaming platforms, Sirius XM increased. Sirius XM, they actually follow viral, right? They have stations that are narrow, very narrow cast, and that's one thing, but they do that. But, you know, for the most part, they might have a station that might be considered pop, but they're actually a mainstream station because they actually follow the charts. They actually try to put out songs that are not the norm because they're not trying to be radio. That's the reason why they're trying to do what they're doing because they also don't play commercials. See, it's these things that you need to do that need to also change. And there's a reason for advertising. You don't need to be putting out that much advertising. I mean, you're not, you're not making any sponsors special by putting them first or last in a six, eight, 10 minute block. It's ridiculous. It's not going to work. I mean, you might do that for talk radio for some certain, you know, people that you listen to on talk radio that might keep people around, but you can't do that for music radio. When I looked at the blocks, when I was working in radio and I'm saying, I was working in iHeart, how the hell are they putting these commercials so long? They're so long. And then there's a point where certain sponsors are not even there. They're just make goods for programming. They have to barter for, or they have to, they're forced to put out. And there are all these like ad rep firms or there are all these like, you know, big progressive Home Depot type ads we can listen to over and over. Well, we're not listening to those. And to put those on the regular radio, it doesn't make a difference. I would rather put out things that are local, that are actually in touch. Because what they're doing is also radio could be actually taking those and putting them as sponsors as opposed to getting them ads are just running over and over that people are not even paying attention to anymore. You make them sponsors. Make Progressive a sponsor. Make them do this and that and make them part of something within the actual content. You know, tag an hour with them as a sponsor or somebody else. But you got to do something else here. Those are all make goods. Unless you're getting paid for them, why are you going to do it this way? There's a different way to do it all together. I mean, you've got pre-roll ads that are going through your digital streams. There's other ways you could get the, those advertisements monetized. You think they're going to make that much off of AM and FM? No, no are not. But then most important, you could get AM, FM radio important again by making it where businesses, where they don't want to go ahead and set up all day listening to radio and they have to, you know, put on a Bluetooth or find some kind of thing to make sure they have data or Wi-Fi to keep the music going. What's wrong with them having a radio that can be playing inside the building that can get it set up through the PA system and then they'll be able to have music without having to worry about, you know, trying to maintain some kind of a stream. They don't have to worry about Pandora or others and having all this stuff going on. Like you can actually make it where people can listen to radio again by getting the businesses to take the radio again and put it on in, in their businesses and get them to go do back to that again. Would that be smart? But the thing is the radio, the, the advertising model has to change because look, terrestrial radio advertising revenue has gone down every year since 2015. Now, Radio companies have been shaky financial ground for a while. As we know, iHeartRadio went through bankruptcy in 2018 and was able to restructure and reduce its billions of debt, but it still has debt on its books. 
But what if radio could pivot away from background listening and toward a more situation-based format, engaging listeners on whatever is relevant at that particular moment? Terrestrial radio has the unique ability to freewheel, so insiders say DJ should be allowed to change course at a moment's notice to best serve that community or their communities. Radio personalities are able to get updates while they're live on the air, which is not possible with pre-recorded satellite radio shows or podcasts. Yeah, music could change. You can let somebody have some autonomy of what's over going on, but this complete authoritarian style of making things play the way they're supposed to be, and you have to have these certain songs played because of their research, which is bogus. You have other research out there. You have real research. You have Billboard doing great work to put stats out there. Just because you're not getting paid by them like you are media-based, that doesn't matter. I mean, you're not helping the artists. You're not helping the musicians. You should actually be working with the record labels to make more money off of them. You should actually let payola be, back, be coming back as far as I'm concerned. Like, go ahead and start taking things from the record labels. Get them to prop up prizes. Help, give them reasons for them to come back to you. Prop them up at concerts. Prop them up all together. Why can't you do that? What's so hard about that? Uh, Keith Dakin, who I was quoting from before, also said that it's the time to experiment. All of our stations are playing less commercials now, way less, because there's not as much advertising right now. That's the point. Get rid of the blocks of inventory thinking you're going to get that advertising back. No, even where I work at, we've cut the commercials down. We've cut them down a lot. I might have put out three to four minutes of commercials back in the day, but we're not doing that now. We changed our model because we know people are not listening to commercials. We might have a minute, maybe two minutes worth of commercials that people will listen through, but that's it because we know people are not going to sit through commercials anymore. Nobody wants to. Nobody wants to hear those. They're going to tolerate only a little bit of commercials at all. And that is it. And that's what's the whole point. So now these are the issues right now. And again, local is the importance of the local stations on how certain stations. Listen, if these bigger companies cannot hold on to these stations, if after the pandemic, some of these stations are going to get left, let go. It's part of a fire sale. Let them go and let local programmers take these over. Take them back so they can be programmed right. Because let me tell you something. Why isn't the, the global community and the other countries outside of the country, out of the U.S., they're doing so well? Because they are human element. They have a human component. They actually communicate to their audience. I'm telling you, look at any Spanish radio station in the Caribbean or in South America or in, or in uh, Central America. They're all engaged. And they all got good ratings. The U.K. has the same thing. Europe loaded with great stations out there with a lot of good talent and they're 24 hours a day programming live because that's what they do. That's how it used to be. That's how it should be. But for whatever reason, the U S lost its way. Deregulation and the corporatization of the entire industry just ruined it. But the truth is it could still have a reason to come back and you need to quit trying to go after the older audience. The, you need to be going after a younger audience. So start going younger. Start going after the Zoom, the Zoomers, the Boomers, not the Boomers. No, the Zoomers and the Millennials. Generation Z, go after Millennials. Start going after teenagers again. Go after those in their 20s. Find a way. Do not just think they're going to abandon you just because they're on social media, they're on TikTok or Facebook or Instagram, whatever. You might have them actually listen to the radio in the background. And guess what? If they're listening and they're on a periscope or whatever they're doing, they might be listening to your, your station in the background. And then you actually have them listening to that station through their social media and a live stream. Some of those people are going to hear, oh, this station, where is that? I got to go look for it. And that's what they'll do. Because also, if you're listening to playlists, you can only shuffle so many times and you change to a different playlist and it just doesn't feel the same. But now you have a point where you can actually control the change of the music you can actually give them something different something new and actually you can help them curate music that's coming up so they're not going to have to wait for some tiktok dance to come out and play to find a new song you might know about new songs that are coming out but then you also can get the audience a chance to call out and say hey what do you think of this song we used to have the uh, wars 10 o'clock battle of the bands 
you'd have two songs you'd put out that were brand new, one that was a recurring champion, another one would be the challenger. You'd find out which song would do better, but that will be a time where you'd have new songs at night during the younger time. The younger people would actually be listening in. That's how it used to be. It can still be like that too. There's no harm in doing it. You don't have the advertisers right now. You might as well find a way to do it. And some of your advertisers, you know, you might as well find some that are out there that are willing to go and put some money down for whatever and get them back. Like there are advertisers you can bring on that might have money that could be national that they're not going to want car insurance, but get McDonald's, get Burger King, get all the food places, get all, you know, get, you know, get whatever candies out there or chips or whatever kind of stuff. Like get, get some of this for a younger based audience. That's what you do. You get the music labels to promote the records, promote the new singles, stream it here, download it from iTunes, download it from wherever. Do that. Spotify and Pandora, they should be also promoting themselves on these stations to get more people to listen to them. So you have curated playlists, but then you also have radio that can also be in harmony. It doesn't have to be one or the other. It can actually be both, believe it or not. Because then what you're doing for radio is if there's a new album, yeah, Go subscribe to Spotify. You can listen to the album. But if you want playlists, come back to us. Then you make yourselves relevant again. Sounds like a really win-win situation. And take the commercials out. Take out as many as you can. And make somebody come in to actually spend some real money. And you know what? Maybe you don't need that many people to go ahead and come in live. If you want to nationalize it, do it. If you want to have local people, then let the local people handle it. I mean... I understand for some people it's kind of tough to get the kind of people there to go and kind of keep you engaged, but there's got to be a way to do it. I mean, there has to be a way. One thing you also need to think about is that, listen, the salaries you're paying some of these bigger stars, if they're not holding up anymore, you're already going to cut them. So when you're going to bring in new young talent to come in, they're going to have a multitasking, then have them become able to go ahead and go on the air and do other things for you and be able to, micromanage whatever they're going to do but then give them a chance to be on air incentivize them for taking a small pay payroll that they're going to or you know whatever kind of a salary they're going to get then go ahead and incentivize i mean that's how it used to be back in the day nobody ever expected a radio to get like that much money off the bat so then you give them a reason to be on the air because when they get on the air then that makes more reason for them to take a smaller paycheck or you incentivize them by being able to take sponsors, just like the podcasters do, that are affiliate program or direct marketing, and you let them get paid commission for every time they promote something on the air. When something comes back, they get a bonus. You get a cut, they get a cut, win-win. And the sponsor gets it. How hard is that to do? Why can't you just do direct response and get rid of some of this bulk advertising crap and get some of this other programming out of there? Because the corporatization is hurting it. By being forced to take certain shows that nobody cares about, it's hurting as well. And that needs to change as well. Like it just needs to. So you have an ad rep firm, iHeartRadio, you can get them to be doing something like that. More direct response. Because it's working. Look at everybody using pre-roll and listening to other product content. That's what they're doing now. When Spotify has their freemium version or you're watching YouTube ads pre-roll before you watch a video on Vivo, that's what's going on. So do the same thing. Relate. Because people listen to some of the ads like that. But, you know, I mean, if you have a new album coming out, something that actually matters. Not just for the 50th time to hear about Progressive and Flow talking about, oh, we could save you 15% on in car insurance. Well, we don't hear, want to hear about that. People know what that is. They hear that commercial everywhere else. Just because they're spending much money or Home Depot spending money to buy new potted plants, they don't care about that either. Actually, bring on advertisers that actually people can care about. That's what you need to do. Now, let me move along here. Moreover, when a station personality is told to represent multiple markets, it can be harder for a station to solidify its own identity. And it makes it harder for the medium to stand off from satellite radio. But again, if you got to do it and you can keep it live 24-7 and take all the different responses or regionalize it, then do it. You have people from different markets. Have them just come on live. Don't make them voice track. Have them live. And then they can handle taking text or whatever and you can from a certain amount of audience. And you do that for several stations and different markets. And that's how you do that. 
That's not that hard. It really isn't. So now, another story I'm going to bring up here is from musicallyguilt.com. Because they asked the question, how can radio survive the looming recession? People turn to radio in times like this. Well, they're supposed to. Now, this is originally from Billboard, but of course, they got a paywall like a mother. So I didn't want to worry about that. So I found it here. So again, radio isn't in the music business. Radio isn't in the advertising business. The problem is radio needs to be back in the music business again. Because that's how they're going to make their money back. Do you understand me? So radio, local businesses close and pare down budgets. Radio stations are unique, uniquely positioned to suffer the consequences. Newspapers the same way. So since the bear market on February 24th, iHeartMedia stock price dropped 63.4%. And then the other stage, other companies, Cumulus and Intercom, the other top three radio companies, also their shares dropped. So they're losing money on the market front. But now people are still listening to radio and businesses are buying fewer spots. So that's the whole point. You have more audience. So make music the focal point. Music is our message. That was a slogan WABC back in, back in the early 70s used to work. And they were one of the largest radio stations in the world. So you have this going on here. And, you know, companies are losing their money. They're losing their shares. Key takeaways right now. Here's the other problem that's going on. Because not only radio are you getting hurt yourselves in many different fronts you're not thinking about who else you hurt because you you are treating the music industry like a redheaded stepchild because you don't pay proper royalties to those artists we know that the streamers do now the music modernization act changed that but you're not doing it you've been fighting the local radio act for a long time well i'm sorry sometime you're going to have to go and take care of the music business so they'll take care of you that's how it works so key takeaways right now, lower ad revenues means songwriters and publishers will be paid lower royalties until ad station, ad, stations ad sales return to normalcy, if that ever happens. Largely, publicly traded radio companies have lowered their revenue forecasts. Many companies are laying off for lowering workers. Well, that's going to happen, but do you really think any of those people are going to bring be brought back? That's one thing you got to consider. These companies can't afford to bring anybody back. They can't, they're not going to, they're not going to, they can't. They cannot sustain being downtrodden three, four months at a time because they're already in dire straits as we speak. They're already in debt. They can't hold on to that much debt. They're going to have to fail. But those radio stations can be brought to somebody else that will take them over and do something with them. And the radio excels during a crisis. Well, that's what's supposed to happen. This is why it's not time now to make changes. Why are you going to do the same old, same old? Who are you serving with this? Advertisers are jumping ship. The music business needs help. And you cannot expect the streaming services to do what they need to do. They're doing their job. But radio is, has a purpose here. And there is no reason why you can't work on this to make it better. Now, Bob Pittman, the iHeartMedia CEO, said during a late February earnings call, we haven't seen an impact yet, but obviously it was going to happen. And five weeks later, they withdrew their financial guidance, do $350 million from a $450 million asset backed loan, asset backed loan, excuse me. And they started seeing all the issues. Now there's a recession. Smaller regional stations are going to get dragged down. And one small network of stations in the Southeast, an owner to be unnamed, says we're holding on for dear life. And he says, I'm in all, he or she says, I'm in all unrated rural communities where we're generally insulated, probably not this time. Are they going to expect any kind of help or relief? So that's what's happening. Prognosticators fear the U.S. economy will sink by historic proportions. I don't know how that's going to work out, but any which way, I know that the radio companies are going to be hurt. Fred Jacobs, who's a longtime radio analyst, he says that um, the Wall Street sell-off is a lot of emotional buying and selling, not tied to radio's inherent value. For radio to survive, um, one other person here is asked, Steve Patron, who's a program director at WHED and Beacon, New York, uh, he says this, for radio to survive, it must leverage the strength of being live and local. And they're not doing that. 
We know a lot of people turn to radio in times like this. You're not going to get it on Pandora or Spotify. Radio can provide companionship and comfort. It needs to be doing that now, right now. James Cridlin, who uh, is a radio uh, is a radio podcast host, uh, does the Radio Today podcast, and also does a lot of work uh, in journalism. He writes a lot about radio. He agrees. Radio owes its audience timely, sensible information. Now, Jacobs believes radio stations will distinguish themselves in this crisis because they may be in the most advantageous position to deliver information, entertainment, and emotional value. Now, 83% of adults in the U.S. say they listen to radio the same or more than they did during the pandemic. But most people surveyed trust radio as a good source of information for the pandemic. Well, that may be fine, but that doesn't... So you might have an audience that will stick around and come into it. And you should try to find ways to grow the audience and find a base that will listen to and take on advertisers. Because you need to find new advertisers somewhere. You need to find a way to bring more people to the oasis that is radio. It can come back again. Cut all those damn commercials down to the bone. Start thinking about your audience for a change. Think about the musicians that are helping supply 95% of what you're playing. You're not thinking of them. And you should be. So again, radio is ultimately a profit-seeking business. Revenues are increasing. And, you know, a company can acquire, create new revenue, stream, or cut expenses. So there's a lot of things that are being changed about it. And it's not good. But that's what needs to happen right now. We need a complete overhaul and change to radio. This is the time to do it. There is no excuse for this at all. We need to see a full significant change to the radio business altogether. Wholesale changes. Either these big companies make these changes, which they won't, or someone else that comes in to take these stations after this, when these are all sold off, and some fire sale, I think that's going to happen. For the good, even pandemic or not pandemic, radio has a chance to come back. It's been debunked. It has been shot down that it would lose itself after television came back out. And then when FM radio came in, like there's always disruptions within the radio industry. But radio itself, yeah, podcasting's taking up a lot of what radio used to be. But the live and local portion, the real-time portion, the portion that actually can keep up with what's going on with the changing days and times, our tastes in music, and what we are entertained by, and what informs us. Radio is one of the easiest ways just to turn a knob on your car radio on. Or just find it on, your, on an app of many apps to listen to. I hope somebody listens to this and we actually get some real change. So I hope I put this point out here and I hope some radio companies will actually consider. Please feel free to comment below or send me an email, kingofpodcasts at yahoo.com. I hope you consider that. And again, if you like these kind of videos, let me know. I'll keep doing more. I'll talk to you next time.